In the last video, I talked about how I have my coding environment. So I talked about what editor I use, what fonts I use, what theme I use, etc. In this video, we're going to be focusing more on the actual terminal. So how I make my terminal look like this. I've got a huge preview up at the moment so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It is comically large on my end, I'll tell you that much. Editing me here, jumping in real quick. Forgot to mention something at this point in the video. Uh, for some of the icons you need something called a nerd font. I go into more detail about that in my previous video where I talk about, you know, my editor and everything. In short, go to nerdfonts.com and download one of those and you'll have them all. But if you want more information, card in the top right will help you. Right, back to the video. This uh, application is cross-platform, it's cross-distribution, so it works on pretty much everything you can throw a stick at. I believe including Windows. I've never tried it on Windows, so I can't vouch for how well it works. We're going to be doing this on WSL specifically. Um, so these instructions are more kind of Linux oriented. Um, but yeah, on Windows and Mac OS, it is possible. It might just be better to look up the Starship website and go down here to where it says, you know, Windows. I believe Mac OS might be able to go through here. I don't know, but we'd, we'd have to see. Um, yeah, Mac OS actually looks quite simple um but uh yeah so to actually install it i have uh, set up a brand new uh i don't know why it started from there that's awfully odd uh, i've set up a brand new uh, ubuntu uh, wsl literally just installed it just now uh, and we are going to install our starship using the following command so we have sh dash c, and then we have this um, uh, we have this dollar sign to indicate that we want to run a command here, or like a, a command in a command, I suppose. And then we just curl the installation script down, and then you know we're running it using the sh command. So you can just copy paste this command out, and it'll work fine. And then it will give you a prompt. So you say yes. It'll ask you to ins uh, to to input your sudo password. So you do that. And it'll give you a lot of text at the end. So the next step really depends on your shell. The vast majority of it is very, very similar. So if I kind of scroll up a bit, it literally is just, you know, for bash, eval, starship, init, bash. For zsh, eval, starship, init, nsh, etc., etc., etc. It goes on. You know, some of them are a bit different. So x onch, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but yeah, it's a little bit different. We're going to be doing it for bash. So I'm going to copy paste this because this is a clean install. And we're going to do nano.bashrc. We're going to scroll all the way to the end. You can use vim if you want, but I just use nano for these sort of things. Paste that in. Close that and save it. And then we can do source.bashrc. And now you'll see our terminal looks quite a lot different. So we have that little arrow. Uh, we have the little tilde representing. If we were to cd say into local, you know, that would update. If we were to cd into uh, again into share that doesn't exist apparently what does exist it should exist oh yeah because I put a slash in front of it it will update you know it will go on and on and on and on and on etc etc there are ways to uh, customize this because if you remember at the start my one wasn't quite the same as the default one so if you go here I'm gonna have to make a dear uh, dot config you probably already have it because this is a brand new install it doesn't have it and we need to do we need to create a file if it doesn't already exist called config and then starship dot toml. And here you'll be presented with an empty file, and we're gonna switch back to my Debian one, and we're actually gonna do it from here. Uh, so we're gonna do nano dot config starship dot toml. And we can see if I zoom out a little bit. Uh, is that all that's all oh god. I might have to try and figure out the flashing um, there at some point. But this is the config that I have. So if you want, you can just literally copy paste this all. I'm going to briefly explain all of this. There's a lot more to it than this. There are huge weights of customization options you can add. Uh, but, you know, these are the ones that I have. So I changed the success symbol to just this little arrow. And then in this, um, uh, uh, in these brackets, we, we just have a color. So this kind of defines the style. So this kind of... In in square brackets is what it is. In normal brackets, it's how it's formatted. So bold, it's in bold, and green, it's the color green. Same with bold and red. This style down here, I think this just means like use the default style, I'm pretty sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't remember fully. I'm pretty sure that it's just use the default style. 
and this truncation symbol is quite useful. Um, so I just have it as like a as a dot 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 character, and then the uh, the like a forward slash. This is I think this does it only activate if you're in a Git repository? No, it doesn't. It activates if it's like too long. Um, so it just means that you don't have this huge directory. Uh, git branch, yeah, uh, so the truncation length for the git branch just means, you know, if the git branch is over 20 characters long, it'll be truncated down. The git commit, um, you know, I just have the hash set to 7. I think it's set to 8 by default, if I remember. I don't remember why I had to set these, but sure. Uh, memory usage is kind of a nice one. So memory usage only triggers if you're using, I think, 75% or more RAM. So you could set the format saying, you know, I put using this because it was a bit more consistent with the rest of the style. Uh, it's disabled by default, so you just turn and you just uh, set it. The package, I do not remember what this does, but apparently I wasn't a fan of it because I disabled it. And the status is something or other. I don't remember what this is, actually. This might be... Oh, no, this is... um. Uh, so this is the kind of an error status. So if I were to say, for example, do like a control C, we have 130 and this. So because the keyboard interrupt doesn't have a name, it doesn't do it. Hang on, if I just do that, it should give us a better error. There we go. So not found, you know, the command isn't found and then the error code 127. So that's what that status does. Um, and yeah, so as I said, there are plenty of other options, you know, we're not going to talk about every single thing because there's an awful lot to it. No, we're still going. This is just the basic configuration, by the way. Um, we're halfway, we're about a quarter of the way through. I just scroll through a bit, a bit quicker, just a bit quicker. <laughs> there's a lot to it. And then you have all the advanced configuration, which is nowhere near as big a web page. But yeah, there is a lot to it. Thankfully, Starship does most of the stuff that's pretty cool by default. And that is how you can make your terminal look like mine if you so wish to. Um, but yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about. If you liked it, let me know. It helps out a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I don't bite, I promise. Uh, and also consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. Or you can join the membership using um, the join button below. One pound a month and get, we'll get you on this screen as well from there. And I will see you next time for the next installment of Perfect Python. So I'll see you for that.